Hey everyone, as some of you are aware, we lost one of Final Fantasy XIV's content creators recently. Frank Marshall, known to most as Pukajitsu, passed away August 24th, 2023. He was a longtime streamer for the game that focused all of his energy on creating a positive atmosphere and helping the overall Final Fantasy XIV content creation scene. For Mock Talk in particular, Pukajutsu was one of the earliest recurring guests that participated in multiple topics from the state of the content that was being released into the game to what it meant to be a content creator within that Final Fantasy XIV content creation space. He was also one of the core members that helped get the World Race streams off the ground, doing some of the unglamorous work behind the scenes and helping a lot with the tech setup. He was a good friend to myself and many others, always cheering fellow content creators on and making everybody feel welcome. Losing someone like him that has been such a positive force in the Final Fantasy XIV community uh, hurts a lot. And while everyone was not fortunate enough to know Pook, there were many who were really feeling his loss right now. I went back and watched every Mog Talk episode he was on. Uh, and actually, it, it was really interesting to hear the topics we discussed with him, as some of those actually relate to the topics we still discuss today. So I've decided to clip out a handful of those conversations to help give those who weren't familiar with him a little bit of insight on just how long he's been around in the community and get a feel for kind of who he was. For those that did know him, Hopefully this will be a refreshing reminder of that as well. This was a very emotionally difficult video to make, as his loss is still pretty fresh to me. But he was an important part of everything I've done over the years in the Final Fantasy XIV community, and this is just my way of trying to show appreciation for him. And before we start, as a quick side note, outside of the first clip and the last clips, everything is in order by the time it was released uh, when we did those shows for Mock Talk. That being said, sit back and relax as we go back in time to hear what Pook had to say over the years. Tell everybody who you are, Pook, just so they know who you are. I am Pookajitsu. I am a community focused, interactive streamer here on Twitch uh, every single day. <laughs> <laughs> every single goddamn day. <laughs> I so wake Sophie, up the stream. Nobody knows what that's like every single day. <laughs> yeah, we're both daily streamers. Daily streamers podcast. I there there was a there was a comment on uh, a thread that I read today that actually kind of resonated with me. That uh, Heaven's Word doesn't feel like 3.0. It feels like 2.6. Okay. So it didn't distance itself enough from ARR. But yet, also the invalidated, invalidated the ARR content. Yeah. Um, and so the, the so a, a five month lull really sucks. However, in the grand scheme of things, five months is a very small amount of time to be waiting for a patch. I think the reason, like, I think, I think, and we're going to be talking about what is coming up in mm -hmm. the patch later. Right, yeah. I, of course, that's the, the whole reason, show. <laughs> I think the reason that people have issue with November is, yeah, it's a disappointment, but also because the stuff that they're talking about releasing isn't big hitting. Like, people would wait for November if this was like, oh my fucking god, mm. I need this now. Right. Um, right. Yeah, but what they're getting is, a, is they're not getting that, yeah. They're, they're, they're getting, they're getting the, the, the maintenance and catch-up patch. Oh, okay. also a relic. Also yes. a relic. Just, just, you know. Just, 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 yeah, I don't really. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, this is a side note, yeah. I, I, you, can, you never get an MMO where people don't complain about burning out because everybody burns out on an MMO. As a guy who literally plays this MMO as his job, I can tell you, you get burned out on an MMO, right? That's, that's right. kind of what you do with an MMO. It's, yeah, uh, like, that's, but it, it's not, uh, it's not, like, I don't know what people were expecting. I think I think the genre has evolved a little bit to the point where you actually do expect that now because it is it is theme park it is mm -hmm. here's your here's your here's your couple attractions for the month 
I guess, yeah. Um, like, and and a lot of the people <clears throat> are like, we're two months over a three a three month yeah. cycle, right? right like, yeah. so we so we basically mi- we're, we missed a cycle. We missed a no. cycle. Yeah. By the time November hits, like, we, we'll basically have missed a cycle, and I I get that. But it is not like an epidemic of like, oh my god, all the burnout. It's ah, like it's not. It, now, I, like, this is a, it's, this is a good that's time. That's like to... hopping at Diablo and bitching that you've got to grind to get your gear. Like what? I was pretty pissed off playing Diablo for the first time. To be completely honest with you. Yeah, but four Diablo. fucking the same game four times in a row. <laughs> or, 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 I mean. <laughs> So, I, I basically, the, like, this is a good time to explore the fact that some really good other games are coming out. Yeah. Oh, my God. I cannot tell you how much I've been, I've been telling Jen, day in and day out, for, like, a week. You're not going to miss glad that I, I, I'm glad that I don't feel like I still have to pound this stuff out. I can log in. I can do my expert for the day. I show up on raid days. I do my Alexander farming for the week. And then I can play TF2 and not feel like I'm slacking on Final Fantasy. No. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm I'm looking at chat and I feel like yeah, I feel like there was a there was a there was a shit ton of content in the X pack. Okay, like, so let's. Let, I actually want to get on that too. All right, so that's something I've heard a lot. There's a lot of content in the expansion, so it gave us a lot of stuff to do. So five months seems justifiable, right? Yeah. Right. We sp- spent money on a game to be instantly delivered to us, and so it's not exactly the same correlation. I think just because. We should have had that because we gave them however much, 40 bucks? I, f- I forget how much it cost. Yeah. I didn't even think about yeah. it when I bought it. Uh, 40 yeah, bucks. Uh, and then we have, all right, that's our game. We get that now. And we still should get, in three months later, more content. More, more content. Yeah, the, the, the expansion should have been developed parallel. Uh, uh, I don't know if I buy that or not. Yeah. I, got, I have to add, before, like, uh, like I, I could totally get behind that, that being somebody's stance. Mm-hmm. Um, they, but the, the it's only the, reason it's the I same response this. I have to everybody who says, "But it's a subscription fee." The, the only... amount of money I am blowing equals a certain amount of entertainment I'm getting, and I got way more than my dollars worth from Final Fantasy. Yeah, way more. I paid fifty yeah, bucks like, for a movie ticket. You know, you know, in this five month span, I have played. It, 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 I've gotten two or three months. I, I guarantee on a heaven's word. Like mm-hmm. it's not like I haven't been playing. Um, right. But. Uh, I think the the reason the only reason that I have an issue with it is because they set the standard. They announced that they yeah. want to keep yes. the standard. That is the only issue I have with it. I don't have an issue with them actually taking a vacation. Right. Um, when so, I when I realize when I realize just how small the damn team is mm-hmm. and just how much content they've pumped out. That's something I'll never argue against. They said every three <laughs> months they didn't deliver. People are pissed. That's great, but I'd rather hear people complaining about the team having failed to deliver on their promise than hearing about people burning out. Okay. Right. You know, <clears throat> I'm not even that pissed off about that because, like, in Guild Wars 2, they said they're going to be releasing content, like, every week or so. Guess what their content was one week? You walked around, talked to a couple of signs, and that was it. I was like, is that seriously the content update for this week? That, you know, when they release content in Final Fantasy XIV, it's actually worth uh, the time and effort. So if they so miss so one freaking not cycle, it's whatever. Stick? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I want a selfie stick in Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> yeah, but do you want it to be the, like, the, the central part of the patch? Depends how awesome the selfie stick is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so no, like, this is the new mini game. Just like triple, everyone is excited for Triple Triad. Everyone is excited for Chocobo Racing. Now we're excited for Lords of Verminion. Do you guys think we're going to be just as fucking disappointed in the end as we yes. were with the other two? My yes. fat cat won't be. As somebody who is super fucking pumped for minion-based minigames, I'm going to be horribly disappointed, and I know it. <laughs> oh, God. Adagio. Nothing that they produce could match the glory that is my imagination of this minigame. Like, <laughs> like we, 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 know, like we know next to nothing but yet something about this because they, they devoted a lot of time to it, but didn't really tell us. They didn't tell us how the game is played. They gave us an idea, but not yeah. like. Uh... They gave us. They gave us stats. Hey, Pook, you want to make a bet? Okay. Five bucks says this mini mini game is overcomplicated as shit for no reason. Well, it's Square Enix. <laughs> you, I'm not gonna take that bet. There. God damn. I'm not gonna take that bet. All right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take that bet. You know the reason I'm not gonna take that bet? I will actually. I will actually just say two words to you, All right. and you will understand why I will never take that bet. What? Chocobo dying. (laughs) (laughs) 
I thought you were going to say Lesbian Promise. <laughs> no! <laughs> that would be a good one, too. Good, good. Pook, what about you, man? What would I say? I first experienced World of Warcraft in a dimly lit alley while pressed up against a dumpster. No, that's a different Ooh. experience. <laughs> um, I... <laughs> Uh, no, I. Uh, I thought we weren't going to talk about that. I thought we weren't going to talk about that. that. that that's how WoW made me feel when I left it. Um, <laughs> 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 Hopefully, this doesn't turn into a straight WoW hate show, but it might. No, no, uh, no. no. Oh, I played. I, I played WoW. I played WoW for eight years and uh, played it obsessively, like to the to the detriment of not playing any other game. WoW oh, was yeah. my life. Uh, I played a little PvP alongside Squeegee. Um, Mainly PVE, a lot of raiding, way a lot of time invested. It was it was basically, it was it was my breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a lot of days, and, uh, uh, and that's probably a good thing about the game is it actually held on to me that way. But did you have kind of a similar experience? I I think that for me, um, I'm I'm still a leveling person, and I don't think I'm jaded by leveling in games. In fact, <laughs> I'm playing some other games where. I'm like, I could play this for the leveling. I don't know if I could play that after the leveling. Mm. Um, and 14, 14 gripped me because it, 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 gave me, it gave me something that I didn't think WoW was going to give me, and that was story. And I don't mean that WoW doesn't give you story, but 14 puts it right in front of your face. Yeah. Um, yep. And basically makes you part of it. So... Um, so 14 was definitely something that, um, when I, when I first leveled in WoW, I actually quit for, like, three weeks, uh, maybe one bubble away from, mm -hmm. from, from level cap at that time, uh, because I was like, okay, I played it, I'm done, I'm not gonna raid, and then someone talked me into coming back and raiding. Hmm. You know, um, I actually had a similar experience, like, I think I got to... We hit. We actually hit level fifty and just stopped. I don't know what it was. That's weird to me. Now that I think about it. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I did it. Or sixty it was sixty, right? Sixty, 60. yeah. 60. It was about it was 60. Yeah. Well, I hit. Yeah. I hit fifty-eight the day before. Before wrath, or not wrath, but burning crusade. Wow, where's my brain? <laughs> I hit fifty-eight the day before burning crusade came out, and it was actually. It was actually. Um, I stopped it uh, right before seventy because I was like, because I didn't get in the game early enough to do the vanilla rating, and thank God for that. Um, yeah, no, no, really, you uh, like, so, so I was like, oh, there, I experienced it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun, I'll see you later, and someone was like, no, 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 come back and do this rating thing, <laughs> and, <laughs> well, yeah, um, 14, 14 really didn't have to, 14 didn't lose me, um, uh, once I got to, by then I knew what an MMO was, I was like, yeah, let me let me get to max let me get to max level and see when the game really begins because that's what you tell everybody. The game doesn't begin until end game. He used mm. to use it as an excuse to get past the painful leveling in WoW until they made the leveling better. Oh, so painful leveling in your regards. And yeah. Squeegee's like, I loved it. I loved every bit about yep. it. Uh, be before <laughs> nice. before Kata, WoW leveling was like a. Oh. It was fun and vanilla. The only yeah. thing I could say that would have made my leveling experience better in WoW, like the only improvement that I could come up with at the time was if I had been playing on a PvP server. Like okay. that was... I actually started oh, on a PvP server, but I made the mistake of my first character was a gnome warrior. Um, poor, poor thing. <laughs> so uh, I got picked, got picked on just cause. I, I'm, that was, that's actually my main character in WoW, a gnome warrior. Uh, am I am I am I surrounded by by by, by, alliance. by an alliance? Is that it really? Well, I started off as a, uh, a Tauren druid. Okay, so now on I'm a PvP by server, codes an alliance is what yeah. I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> on a PvP server, and then I went to another PvP server for alliance. So yeah. it was fun. Um, by by the time fourteen rolled around, I I, I definitely knew what an MMO was because it, it basically became my genre of choice. I've tried so many mm -hmm. of them that the leveling experience was actually kind of refreshing in a way. Um, even though the first 20 levels are like, they make you feel like you're dumb. <laughs> but here, the first 20 levels in Final Fantasy XIV are, here's Babby's first MMO. Yeah. And I'm like... <laughs> uh, in the end, what, what are MMOs really supposed to be about? Are they supposed to be about raiding? Or are they supposed to be something that's a lot bigger picture? Friends. I, yeah, friends. Definitely friends. Like, I think the whole raid thing came about because they wanted to amass people... In large numbers, they wanted to give you a reason to participate in a world full 
of people. It's all about interacting with the people, which is which is why a game like 14 is something that I can still play without raiding. Because yeah. there's yeah, you know. I mean, to me an MMO is absolutely like a lot of people like to say I I'll see people like Oh, I love playing MMOs, but I like to play them solo, you know? And to me, it just kind of defeats the entire purpose. Like, I, I can understand, like, maybe you're just, you know, just kind of want to do your own thing. Like, sometimes I want to do my own thing in-game. But as, you know, as a whole, uh, to me, an MMO is all about my friends. Because I've, I've met so many cool people. Like, you guys, for example. I've met you guys, and I've, you know, come to know you guys. And it's so cool. And I never, ever would have had that without an MMO. And my roommates, all three of my roommates, all play Final Fantasy XIV. I met through them through fourteen. We're all in the same free company. We all play together, and it's just like this. The friends are the the sole reason I play MMOs. The people I meet, because it's just it's so cool. That's actually really interesting to hear. I didn't know you lived with the those guys. Did you guys? Yep. You guys met in Final Fantasy XIV. Yep. Yep. We met in Final Fantasy XIV, and now we're all roommates and. We're all like officers of our free company. One of my roommates is the free company leader. Like we're all just huh. That's really awesome. tightly knit. Wait, so if you get kicked from the FC for poor raid performance, do you also <laughs> get kicked from the, the place you live? Like, is that <laughs> we can't support you anymore? You're out of the <laughs> FC house. I was I was just gonna say that I, I remember like the whole the whole guild or FC thing of just being about hanging out in whatever voice chat they had like all day, like all day. Like you could be doing yeah. other things and you'd probably be in there still. Yeah. Like they were actually there um, in the in the FC before we switch over to Discord. When we had a mumble, there were mumble channels specifically for people that just wanted to sit there and listen to the same music together. Like they were listening to music, or they were watching TV shows and talking to each other about it. It was just the whole day. The the people yeah. were there together. Um, and uh, it, 14, 14's are fourteen's a really good game for for uh, do that as well. But I did see something in chat that I wanted to bring up because it was sure. it was uh, timing here. Uh, Zo- Zoela, Zoe said yeah. that uh, I've made less friends in 14 than I did in 11 in Asheron's Call. And I think that's because of the modern MMO design and how there are things like Duty Finder, um, et cetera, where you don't actually have to interact with people to get a group of people. Mm-hmm. Um, the older MMOs definitely did require you to actually go out there and talk to people or at least spam any kind of regional chat. And that way you do run into people. Yeah. I got to ask you real quick, though, Pook. Um, you know, there's a lot of different players who play the game uh, with different goals for the game. What is currently your inspiration for logging on and how you kind of approach the game? I know this is kind of just out of a nowhere question, but I figure it's good for the audience to kind of have an idea where you're coming from and what you're interested in. Uh, I, I, I think that 14 does a really good job of giving you varied content there's there's almost always something to work on i've always had a, a sense that i'm progressing my character in one way or another i recently just finished even though i was kind of slow to doing it getting everything to 60 and working on getting you know the better crafting gear and stuff like that i'm like actually touching crafting now even though i normally avoid that sort of thing um it actually uh to be honest a lot of it right now is just waiting in excitement for 3.4 but i do still get on regularly um no <laughs> chad has already given me crap because i've been playing <laughs> wow as well but mm-hmm. uh that's been keeping 14 fresh for me um oh. i i play I, I i play other mmos and i see that i that 14 is still probably the best on the market right now and so it's really easy to go back there and and just uh, continue to find ways to keep moving the character forward, you know, whether it be through glamour, which is the true end game, or actually, you know, <laughs> raiding. Right. <laughs> okay, so like, raiding. <laughs> <laughs> or raiding. <sighs> so this is potentially going to be one of the easiest raid tiers, potentially, but you never know. Yeah. It depends what what's your group's better at, mechanics or, or DPS checks. Mm-hmm. Pook. To get you back into raiding, because you you're kind of taking this whole vacation away from raiding. Are, yeah. are you kind of agreeing that like would you go into fights more mechanic heavy? Uh, I oh absolutely. Um, I I I've really I look at the way that this this game does mechanic heavy fights. I think of T five. I think of T nine. I think it's of Titan Titan EX. I think of Ravana EX. And I actually really liked those fights. I prefer them a lot more over what I saw in Gordius, and that's why I actually stopped raiding, was because I, Gordius just wasn't. It, <laughs> it just no, wasn't. Yeah. 
It was. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to speculate that there could be a there could be a couple transitions like that because they did say a few interviews ago that Alexander's element is time, and they were going to yeah. try to make use of time mechanics the best they can. Yeah. And maybe they just really, you know, the keeps maybe the transitioning from the you know the smaller size to the bigger size happens more than once. Yeah. It's or maybe it's only his ultimate attack that it happens for. Yeah. Um. I, I like the idea of him being over the size, you know, side yeah. and being his his true size because yeah, uh, as much as as much as I liked Final Coil, it was kind of disappointing to fight Mini Bahamut and yeah, be like exactly. we're taking right. out the big massive bro. Right. No. Yeah, uh, tell me uh, why Sophia is so fun. Tell me what, what why you think it's so fun. And I'm gonna actually <laughs> start with Pook. Pook. Yeah, go for it. Why is it so fun? The scales of justice. All oh, the Leviathan tipping platform yeah. is back, and those walls are going. They're going away. So here's and. the thing that I heard about that, that you're going to be able to revive players who fall. Mm-hmm. Is this a good or is this a bad thing? I, I, I think it's I think it's good um, if only because there's already enough punishing mechanics to resing somebody in a fight. Like with okay, so sack sack strats have worked in Savage before, but mm-hmm. we're not talking about Savage rating. We're talking about. Uh, uh, an extreme primal fight, which is right. supposed to be the game's mid core. Right. Um, weakness is kind of a weakness is kind of already uh, a punishment enough, you know, and then brink of death would be even worse. So mm-hmm. I think the, re- the real thing here is like, can you not be an idiot and fall off or you're not going to get any more reses anyways? Um, okay. I, I do. I actually see. I like fights in places where if, it, if you're out of the fight, you're out of the fight. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked that about Titan and a little bit less about Leviathan because <laughs> I saw people fall off more often than they should have in Leviathan. Right. <laughs> but, uh, I, I do, I do think that, uh, resin them. Okay. It's still a cost on resources. It's still a cost on MP. It's still a cost on, you know, the debuff it's, and it's mid core content. So okay. yeah. I then I'm like, yeah, is the fact that you can now queue in specifically as a gatherer and get a group of gatherers so that you're it's not mostly for gathering, off. to be honest. Yeah. yeah. So you just go there and gather. It's just a dangerous place to gather. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm fine um, with that, too. Honestly, uh, Diadem is something I liked in its first iteration. And before they did that little nerf where it was kind of like a Diablo ish kind of grind, just go in there and beat the crap out of mobs for 90 minutes. And I felt like they could have done more with exploring places and getting different mobs that way instead of forcing people to actually have to move around the islands and then it turned into nothing. But um, that being said, I'm really, really ready for 3.5 and whatever new exploratory mission they have because Diadem is just... Same here. I'm very curious to see what they're going to do. I'm very curious to see what they're going to do. Yeah. They get, right. another, they get another shot with me. They get another shot with me. They get one more shot. One more try. Then- do you remember try. those shows we had with Diadem, Ark? And we were just like, we're going to talk about it. This is exciting. I, I, this is going to be great. I did a lot of Diadem, to be honest, while I, I was trying to figure stuff out. Yeah. I did, a lot. I did a lot when it came out, too. But once they nerfed it, I was like, okay, I don't even get the grind. I just, yeah. what am I here for? Things like that. Um, speaking, okay, we kind of touched on something that wasn't actually covered in the live letter, but they've blogged about lately. All of the new settings and sliders and adjustments you can make the screenshots... Have you seen that? Oh, You've basically got Photoshop in game now. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. Not not necessarily for me, but I know a lot of people are going to be very happy about that. Yeah. And uh, this is this is awesome too because this is them advertising the game. People are out there and they're like, "I want to be creative. I want to make these cool pictures and everything." And these pictures go around the internet and people see them and they're like, "What game is that? Oh, that's Final Fantasy." Sign me yep. up. Mhm. That looks beautiful. Uh, I want to have fun my with Instagram, this game. My Instagram followers are going to hate me because it's going to be nothing <laughs> but pictures of my Final Fantasy character. Yeah. Uh, just glamour shot. And so really that turns into just the advertising uh, method for Final Fantasy XIV, which is what a lot of people might not see. But that's great. It's a great way to get more people into the game. Wondrous Tales, the other piece of content they're adding into this game, which seems like an extension uh, to uh, Challenge Log, right? <sighs> I'm right. sorry. This is the piece that I'm most excited Pook, for. Throw your excitement out there. Tell me everything about your excitement. As, right okay, now. so the reason I'm excited for this is because it's a piece of content that you're going to be doing weekly, anyways. I play this game on the daily. Like I broadcast it normally on the daily. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's something that I'm always putting some time into, and now I've got myself a bingo board of randomly selected content to just go out there and do 
for no reason other than the fact that it's in this book. Like I, they're um, well in the previous. There's lots of rewards for it. Stuff too. Eh? Well, yeah, there's yeah. rewards, which is why it's incentivized. You yeah. know, it, 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 it's why I want to do it. But I'm gonna look at this and be like, okay, one is for the Makote girl, which is amazing. So how could you say <laughs> no to that? Right, right. Even okay. chat. Yeah, there you go. Two, two, the you get the gear. Mm -hmm. uh, but three, it had things in it like I saw T9 and I saw Extremes and I saw um, one of them was for a Labyrinth of the Ancients. And um, th it's going to get a lot more people into that content. Yeah, basically, if you complete one of your Wondrous Tales requirements in a group that had somebody who hasn't done it before, then you get a point towards one of these. Okay. So more reasons yeah. to help new people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. More reason to be a mentor, I guess. Do you guys remember <laughs> well, the, that thing? Yeah, man. The mentor roulette is awesome for this. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't think of that synergy there. Pretty cool. Yeah, there you go. Uh, join just... back in that chat. Start talking to these players. <laughs> There's a, 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 a PDF that I, I came across it the other day, and it's been passed around a few times. And it's actually just when Yoshida took over during 1.0. Um, uh, it's just an outline just bullet points of yeah. things that he would like to see when 2.0 came around stuff that he wanted to work towards. And a lot of it ended up in the game. Like it, it's a lot of mentions of stuff that ended up in the game, but there were things on there like the, the, the primal summoning and the, you know, yeah, you know yeah. company primal. We've summoning had these conversations like before. Um, yeah. Mark and I, yeah. Primal. Summoning yeah. For FCs, where it, it's like really interesting to see where his, where his thoughts and the, where the process was. But it was also interesting to see things on there that had been on that list for a very long time, but we haven't heard about until recently. Uh, yeah. The Aquapolis was actually on that list. Oh, and, wow. And so you think about like how far you know, or how long some of these things have either been shelved or in development. Yeah. Um, it makes me kind of excited for 4.0 to see because we've seen some of these, all these little subsystems being pushed in now. Also, like... yeah developing it for Mac, too. Like, that's not, that's mm -hmm. not a trivial thing to do, you know? Yeah. Like, Right, like all this stuff is um, there. There, there's a lot of back end stuff that was going on in Heaven's Word, um, for sure. So, again, that's one of the reasons why I have a higher expectation for 4.0. Um, and I didn't really mind Heaven's Word that much. I you like, know, I, I think it was healthy for the. They can yeah. reverse what they did when they were saying, "Hey, we're developing this for Mac." They could just say, "We're ending support for PS3." <laughs> and then they could go into this slingshot of like expectations of that yeah. hey we're gonna make such a better game because we're ending the support for ps3 um yeah i mean that's that's one of the things right that's a system limitation even though if you have the best computer in the world a ps3 is still your system limitation yep, yep, um, yep. so hopefully yeah. they, they can push it yeah yeah and also people have been saying and now i don't know how true this is but they said that with final fantasy 15 coming to an end in its development that that maybe final fantasy 14 will get more resources i don't know if that's how it works but that'd be cool if that's true <laughs> i do get the impression that se isn't directing enough of the money that 14 makes back into 14 yeah i get that every too. time every time every time people say well why haven't you developed this yet you know she's like well we're understaffed and overworked and just like um, part of it is they don't have a big pool of people to hire from. That They've mentioned that before, too. Yeah, yeah. But also, I'm pretty sure that they could, if they actually had some of those resources actually directed back into 14. I mean, could you yeah. imagine if they had Blizzard's resources? Oh, man. Oh, God. Blizzard like, is what kind of game they would be making? It's insane. Oh, like, know, right? the, the, first, the first thing I would do with Blizzard's resources, if they had Blizzard's resources was a server overhaul, I would just give us true cross-server, like... That is the greatest thing. Like, I, I've recently gone back to WoW, and it's the greatest thing. It was just like, if you guys are Battle.net friends, it doesn't matter. Same faction, you're playing together. Just mm -hmm. add each other to a party, and you're playing together. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that, like, that kind of ba that kind of infrastructure and backbone is really, really what uh, I think would... The, the yeah. <laughs> we'd actually have butt sliders. I'm sorry, I got distracted mm -hmm. by no, chat. Yeah. Those butt sliders, yeah. they've, been, they've been a point of contention for a long time. Yeah, but, like yeah... I would go server tech. I would go server tech because that seems to be yeah. their number one like server limitation. Server limitations. So you can't whisper yeah. people in duties. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no. I mean, they should, it would be interesting to but see yeah. if they start making because if they could make the game more worldly, where you don't have to zone between things and you can kind of explore and go out there and see this stuff, that would be awesome. But the only way they could accomplish that is if they had the resources as, such as <laughs> Blizzard. Um, yep. So hopefully we can go towards that, and I, I'd be. 
so yeah. happy <laughs> to see that. Can, I'm, I, I'm, I'm can, really can I interrupt for just a second? Yeah, can, yeah. I just, can I just say hello to Aquorn from the community team? I'm really yeah. sorry I brought up butt sliders. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Aquamorn. Yeah, and so that's awesome. Uh, by the way, yeah. I love it that we have done so much of this, like, bashing. Or I Okay, I've done a little bit of bashing. This is I talk to a lot of people, guys, and so I feel a lot of emotions constantly. <laughs> I'm a very positive person, uh, but it is nice uh, to see the community team here. So, hi, Aquamorn. I like that her name's after uh, something, one of the best moves in the game. So Yeah, absolutely. One of one of them. Yeah, okay. I'm just really excited for um, like I'm really excited for 3.4, obviously, but um, I'm very hyped for 4.0 because FanFest is coming up, so we're gonna get details on it. So that's why I was kind of talking about it, like, and, and you know, it's been hinted at that we might get some swimming and stuff like that too, which means that the zones are probably gonna be a little bit more uh, larger and immersive. So, mm -hmm. like, yeah, literally immersive too if you're going underwater. Yeah, we keep forgetting <laughs> that 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 was heavily hinted that there is gonna be water coming in 4.0. Yeah. Um, so, very off topic, but I, yeah. I'm just I'm super excited about. It. That's why I keep mentioning stuff like that. We're gonna know, have a uh, a 4.0 conversation probably the week before FanFest. Uh, yeah. So we will save all that there, and then we'll have another one a, a post FanFest yeah. show. I can't. Uh, okay, so I know you've been talking about having to remove some uh, space, you know, remove some stuff from your hard drives. Keep that show because one of my favorite things about your, your 50th <laughs> episode was looking back on your guys's predictions of what was going to happen in heaven's word yeah that was yeah that was that awesome. was a highlight there's a few other things that we could talk about here i mean we could also talk about how eg glamour was not really introduced uh to add some more salt to things if we wanted to um what do you guys think well, about that i mean i'll wait until the patch notes are in until i make my judgment there i okay. don't know maybe it was maybe it was small enough that they didn't advertise it it's like it's like you That's can do this not a glamour. small thing that's a huge thing to to some people some though. Perks. Edgy, yeah, edgy, 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 edgy. Uh, tomato, edgy. tomato, chuckaboo, chuckaboo. Lego, my yeah. ego. Yeah. Um, the, the the reason that it bothers me that it hasn't been, you know, announced or put out yet is not that it's like waiting so long for it. I mean, that's an annoying part of it, but it's because they won't be clear of when it's going to happen, and then they kind of throw it in your face another way. They give Alpha Nod different color carbuncles. <laughs> they give the the anima weapon lady this huge diamond carbuncle, and it seems like maybe her research research is going to be the in the lore reason, the in game reason why you could do it. And then they just it's just sitting there right in front of you. It's just yeah, yeah I, I was um, really sure they said that they were going to add at least one to three point four in. In, but I mean, yeah. they haven't announced it yet, so maybe they think it's small enough that they're just going to mention. There's a lot of stuff that they didn't mention at all in the live letter that we know is going to be in in the mm -hmm. patch. Uh, um, like they didn't mention much about class balancing, but like I said, all there's going to be a lot of changes to all the there's jobs. There's always a surprise in the patch notes too. There's yeah. always something where it's like, why didn't they mention this every yeah. single time? So I'll wait until the patch notes before I get really upset about it. But <laughs> okay. I did, I do, I did kind of expect it to be there. Um, also, like even like we were just talking about Warriors of Darkness actually might be a fight but they didn't really confirm that too yeah. it looks like it is but it might, it might not be i really it hope like it, it doesn't turn out to be time. you remember uh there's something like we Raban. Saw the, yeah raban we were like hey we're fighting him that's kind of a big thing what's going on here mm -hmm. this is interesting it turned out to be this little tiny small thing in the story so what if they like made us fight these guys and then we're done we never talk to him again I really, it's like they're out of the story now. That's not too bad. The Fallen really, Star quest line was cool too. I really kind of want the minstrel to just do a retelling of the Raubon fight. Can we get Raubon <laughs> extreme? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I, I, it'd be cool to see more solo dungeons like that, but that's... I know, that's... They need they yeah. need a bigger team. <laughs> yeah. Pook, you kind of came from a different direction. You started on Twitch, right? Yeah. And then yeah. you built, built up your own community and everything. And you did daily streams for two years. Two every years. single day. 731 days in a row. Insane <laughs> uh, to keep that up. And so yeah. you built most of your community while you were streaming and you made it that whole climb up there. Uh, and by the way, congratulations on that. You definitely deserve it. Uh, thank you. It was, yeah. it was easy. It was easy with these people. They made it easy. So I wanted to discuss today Final Fantasy XIV streaming. Uh, on the 50th episode, we did the same thing. Uh, but I want to hit it from a little bit of a different angle this time, hopefully. We'll see. Maybe. I can't really remember 50 if that was All so right. long ago. So yeah, I don't know what we talked about then. But I do want to talk about what you guys have for your experience. I mean, Final Fantasy XIV, it's kind of a weird game to stream. Um, uh, definitely. 
because you can see there's a lot of streamers out there who are like crazy they're jumping around and they're like doing all kinds of things and they're really into the game and they're like action games or they're like variety they're like oh this is a new game this is nice it's great it's fun and or they go into like a competitive pvp game and this kind of stuff is really easy to stream because you're always sucked into it but when you talk about final fantasy 14 it's it's not always like that not yeah. always but it can be have you seen milo's stream well, my he'll be little, like crafting okay. and he'll be like at 110 percent energy right <laughs> yeah and i think that's actually a really good point is that uh for 14 it's the personality you bring to what you're doing as opposed to what you're doing mm -hmm. I've, I've i've actually the, i've seen the sentiment so much that um 14 is a hard game to stream because who wants to watch someone do their dailies i don't even want to do my dailies Unless if they um, make the changes that I was talking about earlier today. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, uh, so I, I think it's it's really uh, it's really what you what you bring to that, and it, it is it's it's so reliant on personality. It really is a lot of Twitch streaming is, but I feel like this game is really really uh, just kind of balancing on that because there isn't the excitement of PVP. I'm sorry, we just don't have it. Um. <laughs> it's all right. I build, hey, I'm building up towards it. I'm, um, I'm making it happen. Uh, all right, guys, I'm investing time into it, so it'll happen. And I've seen, I've seen some streams pick up during the beginning of progression in a new tier, but that that doesn't, main, you can't maintain that. That just mm -hmm. dips right back off. Um, so it's, it's, it's finding new and interesting ways to do the mundane. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it's sad when we talk about it because this is a game we all like love, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to a certain extent, uh, you always got to venture out, but like this game does kind of you're not you're not wanting to play it every single day. You're wanting to like stop, and like it's weird when you talk about not wanting to do a single game every single day because a lot of streamers who are successful they do the do same. Just that, yeah, yeah. You kind of have to because your community builds up around that game. Uh, and eventually you can go into variety gaming and everything, but you, that's a whole different way of tackling streaming. And it's really hard to start off streaming and be like, I'm going to be a variety streamer. No one knows me, but I'm going to stream random games every single day. It, it still happened, but like, I, it's hard. It's very, very difficult. And getting into the Final Fantasy XIV scene, you kind of get into this little niche community and it works out. It has its own little flavor because there's not a lot of Final Fantasy XIV streamers out there. So if you get like a decent like 20 people following you normally, you will start being higher up on the board and then that will kind of escalate or uh, I don't know what's the right word. Escalate. There we go. It will escalate. <laughs> there we go. Uh, into a bigger followership. So it's good in that way, but it, you know why there's not a lot of people streaming Final Fantasy XIV? Because they don't want to play it at that point every single <laughs> At least that's what that, I feel like, right? I, I, I feel like that's part of it, but I also feel like it's a it's it's a very saturated game because of how small it is on Twitch in general. Hmm. Um it's uh if you if you go and look at the the uh the the, the directory page for Heaven's Word at any point in time, you're gonna see maybe the top two rows of streams have and this is gonna sound harsh, decent viewership. Mm-hmm. And then there's rows and rows and rows of one to two viewers. Yeah. And um, it's so it's we're probably at, at our best points pulling maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred total viewers across the site mm -hmm. when there are other games where that's one streamer. Um, yeah. Some of my first mods were really, really just like, oh, you watched every day or you ran stuff with me every day. You're here. Mm -hmm. uh, here's here's the sword. Um after that point, it really was just watching for people who were really helpful and approaching them and asking them again, hey, you want to help out to this degree? And thankfully, nobody said no to me yet. Um, okay. Uh, that I've asked. Uh, but um, even then, I, I feel like my my, my mod ships, the, or the, the mods are actually kind of, it's a kind of a evolving process. Not so much revolving door. There's some originals still there. Um but I found that because I, I run the cast where I also have some of them on voice with me, I've had to bring on mods specifically for chat um, and things like that. So uh, it's kind of weird to have to look out for somebody. It's like, can you be a mod for me who stays in chat and please don't join me in game because I need somebody in chat, <laughs> which yeah. sounds like a horrible thing to ask somebody that you're not paying money to help you out, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, I mean, what do you do when you get, you mod somebody? Do you have to go through a purging phase every once in a while and be like, I have to get rid of... Because you have people talking in your chat and they're mods, but they do nothing. They, just the whole mod wall. Yeah. yeah. I used to... I, I Early on, I had... Um, 
honorary mods, basically either people that were really active or other streamers or things like that. And I did actually have to go through and purge or you get, you get mods that have been inactive for a bit and you're got, you're like, I'm sorry. Um, I hope you come around. Um, but I, if the chat is nothing but a sword wall, a lot of people are hesitant. Right. People are hesitant to, uh, interact. Yeah. Cause they feel like it's kind of exclusive, right? Mm-hmm. Almost. Okay, so I'm going to go through these questions again here. And I'm probably going to have to skip a few of them, so I'm sorry, guys. But I'm going to ask this one. It's directed towards Pook. What's your favorite memory that's happened on stream? Ooh. Um, Pooksmas. Both the first and the second Pooksmas. Um, uh, for, for, for context, um, for Christmas, uh, not last year but the year before, I received three very large boxes um, that were marked do not open until the December 23rd stream. Um, I, I had not known that people were plotting against me um, <laughs> behind my back. We talk about how loyal our mods are, but uh, there are times I want to stab them. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, I did open those boxes on stream and uh, my, my current streaming rig was what was in there. It was every single part of it. They bought me an entire streaming rig, which I then built over Christmas. That's awesome. Um, I I can't I can't actually. It's <laughs> nice to know when that stuff happens too, because I mean, it's even when you're like un- like you didn't go out there and say, guys, please give me a streaming rig, right? No, I talked right. about the fact that I'd been setting aside money of my own mm. because I intended to do it because um, I had an opportunity with Square Enix to stream Just Cause 3 before its release, and I ran into some frame issues because I was running on a potato. Mm-hmm. And they're like, and that's actually part of, part of where they got the idea. It's like, he can't actually do what he wants to do. We're going to enable him to do this. And I, I, I still haven't thanked them enough for that. So that's, yeah. that's probably it. That means that you... They actually like you. There you go, Poop. They, 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 they really, really like, like you. you. Yeah. There you go. Anyone want to do <laughs> this one has to cap some men? We'll get to that. <laughs> cap <bit>. some men. <laughs> how do you guys feel about No, no, let's just hit it. How do you guys you feel about mendacity? it? Yeah. Mendacity? Yeah, mendacity. The first thing I said well, during the live letter when it was announced, like I was just shouting this in chat. I was like, this is my patch. This is my day. Like what a, what a world we live in that I get to grind men and I'll be <laughs> To proclaim that I have grinded men enough to get a ring. I'm like I'm like the person who like always calls tombstones by their full name. Like I don't usually abbreviate them. So when I saw Mendacity and someone made the joke about farming men, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> what do you mean farming men? And they were like, get it, the no tombstone. I was like, oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so I'm I'm just gonna be the weirdo that's like, guys, let's go get some Mendacity. Yeah. Are we fun. gonna have have anybody among us calling the tombstones of fake news since mendacity is lies i saw that going around too mm. um. yeah <laughs> I, man I, i'll tell you one thing though i i just sigh every time someone like intentionally goes out of their way to make like some sort of like sexual pun or something right so That's- for example like uh shiva extreme like i don't want to even join this party finder because it's like anybody want, let, anyone wants to do sex come on guys well, let's do sex yeah I can see that that actually I can't even comment on that too much because that was a running thing in my stream with mm-hmm. Bismarck. Sex became bisex. Mm. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, uh, Pook. Yeah. I just it was it was this was, was a thing. All hey, right. don't don't even get me started on Hawk Manor. <laughs> <laughs> the jokes are on that. Hawk Manor, I don't know if I heard that joke. It it might be a little too much. <laughs> too much for stream. Okay. Let's uh, I'll just let people fill out the blanks for themselves. You know. Okay. Okay. You really haven't heard that before. No, I, I, I don't. You've know. never heard someone be like, "Let's do Bukaki Manor." Like they say, like it's a hockey. Yeah, yeah, I've heard so many people say that. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. that's a stretch, man. Wow, maybe Come I on. hang around some weird people. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely possible. Wow. Yeah. Which Apparently, cool. I thought that was like a thing. Twitch chat, she's calling you out. <laughs> yeah, Twitch chat's a bunch of weirdos, man. All right, so we don't have a lot of information on that. We don't have a lot of information on Sigma Scape. They, it could be any boss, no. and that's the scary thing too, right? Like we we really have no idea. Before we're like robots. Okay, that makes sense. But now it's what? It's we we don't have a theme. Omega can literally be anything. That's actually the it point don't... of Omega. Yeah, is yeah. it can create anything. So we don't have a theme to it. It's like well, we've had our Final Fantasy V. 
It'll be some other Final Fantasy, right? Probably. Yeah, will it be another set of four bosses from another Final Fantasy? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. Sephiroth? Probably. Are we going to put Sephiroth in the game? Are they going to bail out on that? I really want to see a Seymour fight with the element wheels. I think that would make an amazing MMO fight. That's what I really want. We pro- we won't see it, but I want it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, it's, they're going to run out of ideas eventually, right? I mean, they're going to run out of references from Final Fantasies. They're just going to like, we've hit every single thing. Now we have to start repeating it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they could eventually. That's another reason why they're going to be hesitant on bringing things in. Yeah. But I said this before in a previous show. Let's take it a little bit away from the Final Fantasy universe and start introducing other Square Enix games like Karano Trigger and so-and-so. Pink Who cares? It's the same IP. A King- <laughs> Disney? Yeah, we'll turn... <laughs> Disney bosses... Sigma escape is Mickey Mouse. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Enjoy. That would be absolutely insane if he like you go into the last boss and all of a sudden this dark cloak Mickey Mouse jumps down with his keyblade or whatever. <laughs> it's like, we were kind of talking about that today because I was actually streaming Kingdom Hearts today and uh Instead of pull, instead of a trash wave between bosses or you know like trash that having to do with trash, you just have to pilot a gummy ship. <laughs> that would be more interesting. <laughs> It uh, would. Uh, People would be really bad at it. Yeah, I kind of miss like them forcing you to do like ads and other things before a boss. I don't know. Like, I feel like they they've kind of copped out on that a little bit. Uh, like, if you do Savage right now, and you don't have to do the puzzle, you know what the most? Right, I'm just sidetracking on uh, O3s right now. Why don't I have to do that stupid puzzle in the desert in Savage? Right. That's what yeah. I said, but then everybody in my chat was like, "No, that'd be terrible. Like, you're stupid. Don't." Well, that I would, would be love. Awful. I would love it with I some kind know. of complication. Like, there's a. Okay, you are all in there, and you don't have to navigate towards the middle because there's a mob you have to kill before you can exit. Oh gosh. And then you exit. Yeah, I'd be okay with yeah. that. Yeah. Faust just drops down in the middle. Yeah, it's just a Faust. This is another <laughs> Faust. I'm. I've I've been notified that I'm supposed to inform you, and I've seen this, but I wasn't going to say anything about it. That my name is misspelled. Fuck it. <laughs> I, I forgot the A. I forgot the A, man. Poochitsu. Hey, I was doing it in a rush, man. Time, time let me, let me just like... borrow one of Arthur's A's. Can I just borrow one of his? He's not using them right now. Yeah, yeah. Just bring it over. <laughs> yeah, hold on. We got it. Hold on. Did we do it? Yeah, I got it. All right, it's changed. We're good. We're good, guys. We're good. Yeah. Yeah, everybody got Blitzball incoming. Yeah. Um... <laughs> We're talking about things that we heard about that we haven't heard about. In a while. Yeah, like what? <laughs> I think the trend now is just like they just stop mentioning it if they don't feel like it's gonna actually happen. It's we just like like, quiet. like she stop talking, please. Please don't look forward to it. <laughs> like I feel like if she's just sitting there, like man, these things are great, and then he starts having a conversation, and his filters off, and he's just like, yeah, this blitzball, yeah, awesome. Yeah. All right, let's get this going, and then everybody's like, I, they start running into a wall with it, and they're like. Just forget. Just ignore it. It just doesn't exist. Put it in a little trash pile. I'm waiting yeah. for the moment where Yoshida is talking about something he wants in game, on like during a live letter or something, and just like a, a Square Enix executive in a black suit and shades walks out and taps him on the shoulder and just goes, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> just hey, hey. I like they bring out the cane and then like you see Yoshida's chair like slide <laughs> off to the side. Like, oh, I guess uh, so, bye guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh. Blitzball. And can you imagine what Blitzball is going to look like if they ever do get it in though? I mean, honestly, uh, after being the, underwater. They're like they're like, do you really want to like one of the things he threw out there was like, do you want manager mode? Like, would you just manage the Blitch Ball team like you did in, or would you actually active play it? And I'm like, hmm. Would it be the Lords of Verminion version of Blitz Ball? Oh, Pretty much. Yeah. Now, why did yeah. you bring up Lords of Verminion? I forgot about that. Do you guys yeah. know that there's there's development and things like Lords of Verminion that happen every single day on this Critic team? <laughs> and we see these things there- happen. Every time they come out with a new minion, somebody has to decide what the what its move. Yeah, what its abilities are. Yeah, like uh, somebody somebody's job is literally to still work on Verminion. Uh, well, I mean, it's not their only job, but yeah, they they have to dedicate it's their time. Only job. <laughs> he would have the most depressing job in the world. I'm pretty sure. Like, yeah, hey, we have this dead do. system over here, but we gotta keep updating it. So you know. 
Let, let's talk about a new system that's actually looking promising, though. Perform. Yeah, they jumped on that quick. Uh, they were like, let's introduce it, see how people react. And now they're like, we need a team dedicated to perform. <laughs> you guys are going to have a new yeah. UI. You guys are going to have new instruments. You're going to be able to key bind the perform UI specifically so you don't have, it doesn't interfere with your other key binds. Like, mm -hmm. it's going to be, it's, they got the piano on. It's going to be four instruments. I hope. I hope that one of them is like uh, a whoopee cushion or something. <laughs> did, they, did they mention if you can play more than one note at a time? No. And it, probably, it, still... it doesn't look like it had anything for holding notes either. So it, that's still going to be an issue. I know that you didn't expect it with a harp because you don't mm -hmm. sustain it on a harp. But mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that'll be interesting. Like, what, what are you going to do? You're going to have like a full band, like someone with drums on the side. Like, are you, it's just. They'll have a little tip jar or something. You'll, maybe they'll introduce that in the perform, perform a feature. Tip jar. They'll have like a little tip jar sitting out in front of there, and so people can come over and throw gill in there while you That'd and your cute. three friends I, are in a team playing music. I just said I can't perform inside of an instance because then I can't use the the replay feature to watch. My perform. <laughs> uh, all right, how did you guys come up with your stream names? I think I've heard Pooks before. Pook, you can you can say it again if you like. I play, I, this is a nerd answer. I play a tabletop game that I've played for over 20 years called Changeling the Dreaming. Uh, there is a type of character you can play in there called a puka, which is a trickster and a shapeshifter. And I really like them and people thought I was good at playing them. I to play in puka, puka jutsu. Uh, um, the puka are also horses in Celtic, Celtic mythology, which is one of the places that poop ponies come from. Anyways. Twitch isn't like just some, oh, we're all nice and happy and everything else. There's there's fucked up shit going on and we just need to be aware of it and just try not to be, try to mature up a little bit, get thicker skin in the end and try to not be a person, the reason why someone needs thick skin. But I've also seen like some unbelievably kind gestures too. Like that's, that's something right. that I have to point out. Like I didn't even, I, I actually didn't know people could be so kind but mm -hmm. my community has done some shit for me that i probably don't even deserve but they think i do so they did it mm. and uh i see that happening a lot in the 14 directory too probably more yeah. than any other directory you right. know sometimes i feel bad because of that like some you know you know we have, we have been talking about how bad people are to us right then we are like you know we feel the need to lash out we feel the need to ban somebody we feel the need to you know off the stream and think about it not so much, but we do. But then there's this other side of the coin, like Pook say, right? People are so nice, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you sit there and wonder, wow, what can I do different to try to, you know, pay back this kindness? You just can't. You just can't. You just, at the end of the day, you just have to be yourself. Like, mm -hmm. while some people don't like you, there are some people that likes it. So it's, it's hard to balance, man. I think for us, right? Being the thick skin that we develop, right? Sometimes we also have to like, understand the barrier or the, the, the boundary of okay okay this is what i have done this is somehow what i pissed off people but is it because of this that somehow i also you, you can't go too much into that you know it, 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 it that that kindness that sometimes people being so kind to you actually mm -hmm. somewhat also fucks with your mind sometimes like what what do i do what how how do i deserve this wait what this person is so nice how is this person entangled in another controversy? I don't understand. Don't think about it. Just don't think about it. Just yeah. sometimes sit down and just fucking accept it, you know? So, yeah. If you are dedicated enough and you're watching the right guys, you're going through the right stuff, you're paying attention and you're trying, you could be good at Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, Anybody can. Just have to put in effort. Yeah. And pe yep. people find all kinds of stuff to watch. I don't even raid. Like, I know everybody's going to look at me like yeah. I'm weird. I don't even raid and I stream this game. No, that's an like, extremely <laughs> popular thing. I, I, yeah. I stream I stream roulettes, and the hardest thing I get into it is a 24 man where I'm yelling at somebody in the Alliance chat for being dumb. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> honestly, that's it. Um, I do want to touch on the fact that I think a lot of people confuse the word positivity with always being happy. Um, but I do think that I do think that that's that's a crutch that's relied on just as much as somebody coming over from like YouTube mm -hmm. and wanting to be the YouTube overreact person. I've seen a few of those people coming over too, where everything's a big whoa. When you asked me to be on the show, I went I went looking at some analytics uh, for for my channel just to kind of get a, a look at this because one, I was going to ask you guys, do you think stream titles really actually impact who watches you? Hmm. 
Like we yes, talk about, we I talk fucking about, hope they do because uh, fucking all the WoW refugees are welcome. I, yeah, from what I, I hear, that that game is a burning, sinking ship of death and misery, and you're welcome on this stream. You're welcome on on uh, on on my stream. Uh, so I have a Patreon at the bottom of my Twitch channel. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, I, I went back and I looked and I was like, during the month of December, my stream title that was the most successful for re- bringing in new people was MMO Man Streams MMO Game. <laughs> nice. You think that might be and a I'm coincidence, like, though? I, it might be. I don't know. Like, that was it. And the other one the other one was uh, Capping Tomes and Wrecking Homes. I, people apparently liked that one. You just can't, you just can't yeah. give that shit attention. Yeah, my own my own approach to all of this has always been that you can't control whether or not people like you, but you can control what you put out there. So anytime that I'm getting like bothered by the fact that somebody's stirring up shit about me or doing something like that, I try, I try. I don't always do it because I'm human, but I try to put that energy towards putting more of what I want out there as a response because I can control me. I can't control them. Um, first, I want to echo what what Zeno is saying to play play to your strengths. I think that's probably the most important thing you can take out of this. Um, I, at the at the end of the day, we all have unique experiences to share, and I, I think people need to find what that is for them and share it. Twitch isn't always the medium to share it on, but for a lot of people, it is. So, I mean, that's that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is just shout out to anybody who actually as entertainers takes people's minds off the bullshit for any amount of time that they do like that's that's really that's it like you're you're you you might just be a distraction you might be somebody's best friend you might be the only voice they hear because they live alone uh <laughs> if you do that through breaking controllers and having salt fest at dark souls or if you do that through you know just having a an irl stream where you where you sit and eat cake i don't know like whatever just <laughs> Just that, you know, seriously, thanks for doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, and as long as long as those things remain your focus, like I think you'll be OK. Like if, if if you start to if you start to drag the bullshit into your channel, that's when I think that, you know, it, it becomes an issue. So yeah. I stream each and every day. How about that? Um, yeah. We are currently uh, 241 days in uh, to our daily stream. We do that at every morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern over at twitch.tv slash pukajitsu. Um, be happy to have you over there. Um, and then also I started picking up some night streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays where we're playing uh, starting tomorrow uh, at 5 p.m. We're starting uh, Walking Dead Season 2. Uh, Sorry, I completely oh, yeah? spelled your name wrong. And you spelled my name wrong. Oh, horrible. Uh, so, so, uh, so if you, uh, if you happen to be around... For either of those times, uh, the ponies would be more than thrilled to have you there, um, mm-hmm. and uh, I'll keep I'll, I'll, I'll keep a few decks for you. Okay. To watch that. Uh, because to, because today I got to unbox uh, <coughs> the like master collection of bags of dicks. Oh, you're pulling an <laughs> optical. <laughs> oh. Um. Thanks. Thanks to thanks to Buddy. What's his name? Uh, I really appreciate the shipment of, <laughs> of all of the dicks. Any shoutouts? For other people, huh? Oh, no, no, yeah, I'm kidding. You know, <laughs> shout out yourself, man. Say, yeah, shout out to me. Yeah, I mean, like, shout out to me. I'm the best <laughs> person shouting you out right now. No, yeah. um, no, I, I have to say that the community makes this game. And, like, that's true about a lot of MMOs, but the community truly makes this game, even the streaming experience and everything like that. Um, if, um, I there's yeah uh, just there's there's so many people that have been so welcoming and supportive and absolutely entertaining and there's people that have you you've invited me on the show five times now five Has it times been five times yes five times I don't even I don't even fucking that's raid almost like ten uh, percent <laughs> of all my shows man yeah this is the <laughs> yeah this I don't, I don't even raid and you brought me on the show five times and you put out you put out a damn a damn good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my swear words. I'm gonna you put out a damn good show. You do. You put out quality content. Damn. Um, I, I I'm happy to read about it every week, even if I don't get to watch every episode. Um, and uh, that's just another just a staple of this you know, really great community. Um, and if I have to name names, and I have to you know thank my team, you know, Happy Miss Tech Sly Raze, everybody over there, Mary for for also kind of encouraging me. And uh, 
And yeah, and the people that are in chat right now spamming Juan Juan because Milo is an amazing guy yeah. who I really miss. Yeah, Milo. Uh, free, free Milo. Uh, Pook, uh, I do want to thank our guest here, Pook Firsto. Pook, congratulations oh. on your 600 days of st- consecutive streaming. Uh, that, that's pretty awesome, man. Uh, really, thank really, you. really good job on that. And then, um, I mean, you're you're going for two years now, right? You're almost well, there. Two, two, two years is the next goal, and at two years, I'll probably set a three-year goal. Like, at one year, I set the two-year goal. So it's it's going to be, you know, two years of without missing a day. Um, the community makes it really easy to do every day. It's actually a, a pleasure to wake up every morning and interact with these people on a daily basis. So um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and... If you guys don't watch Pook in the morning, you should probably watch Pook in the morning. That sounds like a good name for a show. Almost Pook in the, Pook morning. In the morning. Yeah, yeah. I, I was actually, I was actually. Just, that's something that's considered was you know people do like t-shirts and or socks or things like that. I was thinking about doing coffee mugs, but I gotta find a good you know yeah. place to get coffee don't, mugs made. Don't ever. Hopefully the K doesn't fade out on the shirts. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, Pook in the morning. <laughs> Pook in the morning. Hey, Which is <laughs> after you've had a good glass of coffee. Well, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I mean, you guys should definitely check him out. It's awesome just to have him at least in the background hearing you talk and go through your morning stuff. is uh, It's comforting. Uh, I don't get the opportunity as much because work takes me out in the morning a lot. Uh, but if I do get a chance that I'm off at home and I can put your stream up, then I usually put your stream up and listen to you in the background. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and you can catch him where? Pook, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash pukajutsu or on Twitter at Pukujutsu, or on Instagram, at Pukujutsu, on YouTube, at Pukujutsu, even on Facebook, at Pukujutsu. Um, it's it's kind of really easy to, awesome. you know. <laughs> you got the name, man. That's, yeah. Uh, so, and also, I forgot to do this, but is there any shout-outs you want to do for anybody, Pook? Me, personally, I want to just shout-out people that are here today. Um, Mog Talk is a fantastic, I, I, it's a fantastic, it, it, I think it's a pillar of the community. I think <laughs> that this is... This is, yes, I, I okay. think that you have set the gold standard of community interviews. I oh. love this show. I absolutely love this show. And not because you have me on it. I mean, that, that's also a nice little perk. But um, <laughs> uh, it's, I really like the, uh, I really like the, uh, the, the, the atmosphere here. I love being a part of the show. And I hope that it continues to grow and, and makes it well into the future. And I hope to celebrate like 200 shows with you at some point in the near future. Pook, yeah. I, that means a lot to me, man. I appreciate it. Pook, and again, I want to say thank you very much for coming on the show. Every time you come on the show, I, I love having you on. You give a really great perspective of the Final Fantasy XIV community that's really hard to get, of a caring and uh, very, very kind person. I feel like I duplicate it with my terms there, but you are, oh, that defines you. you. You're a very kind, nice, wonderful person that people, I again, if you could watch Final Fantasy XIV and you want to watch Final Fantasy XIV in the morning and you want to drink coffee and do whatever, Pook in the background is like the best thing in the world. But thank you, thank you. Yeah. So thank, um, thank you. you for having me. Um, you've had me on so regularly. I'm just like, uh, I, I we're counting. I was counting earlier how many times I uh, showed up in the clip, and I was like, I hadn't even realized I'd been on the show that much. So, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for thinking I'm, you know, great to have on. <laughs> you are definitely that. are, man. Uh, all right. Well, anyways, I appreciate you guys coming on Pook, especially, you know, it means a lot that you came on last minute. I know you probably weren't mentally ready to come on, but you're, you're awesome. And I knew you'd be awesome. And that's why I wanted you to come on. So thank you for that. Oh, no problem. I'm always happy to be here. I'm just glad that it worked out, you know? Yeah. Okay. So let's do your shout outs though, Pook. Do you have any shout outs for anybody? Shout out to other people, huh? People that, yeah, people you care about in some sense. People I care about? Well, yeah. my entire team, the Ethernet. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I wonder, that, 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 I, I was just wondering where I might have met Sophie before, and uh, that's one of the places. Oh, okay. Um, I, I think they're they're an awesome, great, great group of people. And uh, somebody in chat said to shout out to Mr. Happy, so I'll shout out to Mr. Happy. Um, Mike's been a good friend. Okay, there you go. There you go. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, shout out to the ponies who showed up uh, with the unexpected uh, uh, appearance on the show and they came and showed their support. I see you out there. You guys are awesome. 